cultures have a fascinating way of personifying their endeavors and unique was. Hello people, welcome to stories, curiosities and mysteries, today we will see the gods and figures of death in different cultures, but before we start, don't forget to subscribe, activate the bell and leave a good like. It will help me a lot to continue, well, without further ado let's pay him. Number 21, Pluto, he's the minion over the underworld and his role as guardian of souls have made him a symbol of power and mystery. Pluto is the son of Saturn and Apes, and brother of Jupiter and Neptune. After the defeat of the Titans, the world was divided between the three brothers, Jupiter received the sky, Neptune the seas, and Pluto, the underworld. Unlike his siblings, Pluto chose to run over the world of the dead, a shadowy but crucial realm in the cycle of life and death. Pluto's underworld, also known as Hades, is a place where the souls of the deceased met their final fat. This underground realm is divided into different sections, including Tartarus, where evil souls are punished, and the Elysian Fields, a paradise for virtual souls. Pluto, along with his wife Proserpina, rules with justice and severity, ensuring that each soul receives what it deserves. Pluto is often depicted with a scepter and a helmet that makes him invisible, symbolizing his rule over a realm hidden from the eyes of the living. Furthermore, A is associated with belt, as precious minerals and gems are found underground. His very name, Pluto, is derived from the Greek word Plotos, meaning belt. Despite his fearsome reputation, Pluto was not considered evil. His role was essential in the balance of the universe, and his respect for order and justice distinguished him as a just god. The Romans worshipped him to ensure a peaceful transition to the afterlife and to ask for protection from the evils of the underworld. Number 20, Osiris, is one of the most important and revered deities in ancient Egyptian mythology. Known as the god of death, resurrection, and eternal life, his history and symbolism have deeply influenced Egyptian funerary beliefs and rituals. Osiris is the son of Heb, the god of the airs, and Nat, the goddess of the sky. Brother of Isis, Set, and Neptis, Osiris was born with a great destiny. According to legend, he became the first pharaoh of Egypt, ruling with wisdom and justice, introducing civilization, agriculture, and laws. The central myth of Osiris is his murder at the hands of his jealous brother, Set Set, eager to usurp the throne, tricked Osiris, locked him in a chest, and threw it into the Nile. Isis, Osiris, devoted wife, recovered his body, but Set dismembered it and scattered the pieces throughout Egypt. With the help of Neptis and Anubis, Isis reunited and resurrected Osiris, allowing him to become a lord of the underworld. Osiris is often depicted as a mummified man, with green skin symbolizing regeneration, and wearing the Atef crown, a sceptre and a skirt. His resurrection symbolizes the hope of life after death and eternal renewal. The Egyptians believed that since Osiris had conquered death, so to called they. Egyptian funerary rituals, including mummification, were designed to ensure that souls followed Osiris, passed to immortality. The cult of Osiris was central to Egyptian religion for millennia. Their temples and festivals, especially the famous Etara, were key events in the Egyptian calendar. Furthermore, their myth influenced the development of concepts such as the judgment of souls, with Osiris acting as Hudhe in the afterlife, wind the arts of the deceased against the feather of Maat, the goddess of truth and justice. Number 19, Nergal, is a prominent and multifaceted figure in Babylonian and Sumerian mythology, known as the god of war, pestilence, and death. Whose name roughly translates to King of the Great Dwellers, he is a deity of Sumerian origin who was adapted and worshipped by the Babylonians as well. He is the son of Enlil, the god of air, and Ninlil, the goddess of grime. His mythology is deeply intertwined with themes of destruction and regeneration, reflecting the duality of his nature. Nergal is commonly depicted as a powerful and fearsome warrior, wielding weapons and often accompanied by a lion, a symbol of strength and ferocity. He is further associated with the mid a team of scorching yet and desolation, as well as pestilence and plague that swept through the lands. One of the best known stories of Nergal is his descent into the underworld and his eventual marriage to Ereskigal, the queen of the underworld. This union gave him control over the and the fat of souls. 
However, his warlike and destructive nature made him a feared god, as he also brought disease and war to mortals. The cult of Nergal was prominent in ancient Mesopotamia, where it was invoked both for protection in battle and for the cure of illness. Although his destructive aspects were feared, his vital role in maintaining order and regeneration was recognized. His main temple was in Kuta, a city known for its rituals and festivals in honor of the god. Number 18, Aita, is a shadowy and enigmatic figure in Etruscan mythology, known as the god of the underworld. His role in Etruscan cosmogony reflects the beliefs and attitudes toward death and the afterlife of this ancient civilization. Etruscan mythology, though less well known than Greek and Roman mythology, is rich in deities and mystical figures that reveal much about the culture and spirituality of the Etruscans. Aita, the Etruscan equivalent of Hades in Greek mythology, is one of these key gods. Although specific details of his origin are hazy, Aita is frequently associated with the underworld and the rulership of the dead. The underworld in Etruscan mythology, ruled by Aita, is a dark and mysterious place, inhabited by souls and spirits. Aita is responsible for maintaining balance and order in this realm. Artistic depictions often show him with attributes that underline his connection to death, such as dark robes and funerary items. Aita is usually depicted wearing a helmet that renders him invisible, similar to the Greek Hades, underscoring his dominion over the world that is not visible to the living. His iconography includes images of infernal creatures and symbols of death, such as snakes and ravens, which reinforce his authority over the underworld. Although the cult of Aita was not as widespread as that of other Etruscan gods, his influence was felt in funerary rituals and beliefs about the afterlife. The Etruscans believed in an afterlife and the importance of propitiating the deities of the underworld to ensure a peaceful transition for the souls of the deceased. Number 17, Baron Samedi, is a central figure in the Hashem Bodo religion, known for being the Loa, spirit, of death, sex, and resurrection. In Bodo tradition, the Loa are intermediaries between the world of the living and the world of spirits. Baron Samedi, whose name means Baron Saturday, is the leader of the Wede, the spirits of the dead. His special day is Saturday, and it is on this day that he is honored and offered. Baron Samedi is easily recognizable by his distinctive appearance, he dresses in a black evening suit, wears a top hat and sunglasses, and is often depicted with a cotton nose, evoking the image of a corpse prepared for burial. This dandyish style and his often lascivious and playful behavior underline his mastery over life and death, as well as his control over regeneration and fertility. As guardian of the tombs and lord of cemeteries, Baron Samedi is the one who receives the dead and welcomes them into the afterlife. He is known for his makeup sense of humor, but also for his ability to resurrect the dead. In addition, he is invoked to cure illnesses and provide protection, as he is believed to have the power to influence life and death. Devotees of Baron Samedi worship him through rituals and ceremonies that include music, dancing, and offerings of rum, tobacco, and food. These rituals are often held in graveyards, where his presence is believed to be strongest. Baron Samedi is also known for his ability to grant favors to those who show him respect and make suitable offerings. Number 16, Mot, is a crucial and feared figure in Canaanite mythology, known as the god of death and destruction. His name literally means death in Semitic, underlining his absolute dominion over this aspect of human existence. Mot is the son of El, the supreme god of the Canaanites, and the brother of Baal, the god of storms and fertility. Canaanite mythology, rich in deities and epic tales, places Mot at the center of some of the most significant conflicts in the Canaanite pantheon. He is a figure who represents the destructive force of nature and the inevitable reality of death. One of the best known myths about Mot is his eternal battle with his brother Baal. According to tradition, Baal, the god of fertility and life, was challenged by Mot, who defeated him and took him to the underworld. This struggle symbolizes the natural cycle of the seasons, where death, mud, overcomes life, Baal, during the months of drought and death, only to be defeated again when the rains and fertility return. In the mid, Anat, Baal's sister, confronts mud to avenge her brother's death. Her victory allows for Baal's resurrection, thus ensuring the continuity of the cycle of life, death, and rivers. 
This cycle is essential to the understanding of agriculture and the survival of Canaanite societies. Moth is frequently depicted as a fearsome, devouring figure, often associated with the underworld and desolation. His mouth, large and hungry, symbolizes his ability to consume everything in his path, reflecting the relentless nature of death. Despite being a feared figure, Mot was also respected and revered by the Canaanites, who understood that death was a natural and necessary part of the cycle of life. Rituals and offerings to Mot sought to appease his fury and ensure the protection of the living. Worship of Mot reflects a deep acceptance of the duality of existence, where death is both an end and a necessary precursor to rivers. Number 15, Charun, is a shadowy and terrifying figure in Etruscan mythology, known as the demon of death and the guide of souls to the underworld. His role and symbolism reflect Etruscan beliefs about life after death and the inevitability of mortality. Charun is one of the most notable and distinctive of the Etruscan divinities. His figure originates in the funerary and spiritual traditions of the Etruscans, a civilization that flourished on the Italian peninsula before the rise of Rome. In Etruscan cosmology, Charun played the role of Sichopong, that is, a guide who led the souls of the deceased to the afterlife. Charun is often depicted as a grotesque, demonic being, with features including a hooked nose, sharp fangs, and pointed ears. He often carries a mirror magic, which he uses both as a tool to open the gates of the underworld and as a weapon to punish damned souls. His gruesome appearance not only served to instill fear, but also to symbolize the inescapable and severe character of death. In Etruscan mythology, Charun was not simply an evil demon, but a necessary figure in the cycle of life and death. As guardian and guide of souls, he ensured that the deceased found their way to the underworld. His presence on Etruscan tombs and sarcopagi underscores the importance of his role in funerary practices and beliefs about the afterlife. Unlike other Etruscan deities, Charun was not worshipped in temples or made into ritual offerings. His existence and representation were predominantly symbolic, integrated into funerary practices and funerary art. Since featuring Charun in Etruscan frescoes and funerary sculptures emphasized the respect and fear that the Etruscans felt towards death and the afterlife. Although Etruscan mythology was largely absorbed into Roman culture, the figure of Charun survived in the collective imagination, influencing the representation of demons and figures of the underworld in later mythology and art. Number 14, Supai, is an essential figure in Incan mythology, known as the god of death and the ruler of the underworld, also Kayedu Kupacha. His role and influence underline the Incan conception of the afterlife and the importance of death in their worldview. Supai is the son of Inti, the sun god, and Pachamama, the mother heirs. Despite his divine origin, Supai is a feared figure, as his domain is the Ukupacha, the underworld where the dead and evil spirits reside. Unlike many other cultures that consider the underworld as a place separate from the land of the living, the Inca saw the Ukupacha as an integral part of their existence, influencing both the world of the living and the dead. Supai is frequently depicted as a demonic being, with horns and a terrifying appearance that reflects his dominion over the darker aspects of life and death. His image, Tog Feared, is also respected, as it symbolizes the uncontrollable power of death and the need to maintain a balance between the world of the living and the dead. As Lord of the Underworld, Supai is responsible for receiving the souls of the deceased and maintaining order in the Ukupacha. His influence is not solely negative, he is credited with the ability to control pests and diseases, and is also invoked for the protection of the living. Incan priests and shamans performed rituals and ceremonies to appease Supai, thus ensuring the protection and the health of his community. The cult of Supai manifested itself in rituals and offerings, especially during festivals related to death and the harvest. It was believed that the souls of the deceased needed to be guided and protected on their journey to the Ukupacha, and rituals for Supai were a way to ensure that the dead found peace in the afterlife. Offerings included food, drink, and sometimes animal sacrifices, seeking to propitiate this powerful and feared god. In some regions of the Andes, Supai has been syncretized with figures from Christianity, such as the devil. Number 13, Ereskigal, is one of the most prominent and enigmatic figures in Mesopotamian mythology. 
As the goddess of the underworld, her dominion and power make her a central pillar in beliefs about the afterlife in the ancient civilizations of Same, Babylon, and Assyria. Eres Kigalis the sister of Inanna, or Istar, the goddess of love, war, and fertility. While Inanna represents the more vibrant and fertile aspects of life, Eres Kigal personifies the darkness, death, and mystery of the underworld. Her realm, known as Kuror Irkaya, is the place where the souls of the dead reside. One of the most famous myths about Eres Kigal is the descent of Inanna, an epic that recounts Inanna's visit to the underworld. In the Tale, Inanna decides to visit her sister Eres Kigal in her dark realm. However, upon arriving, Eres Kigal captures and kills Inanna, hanging her body on a oak. Only through the intervention of other gods and the skill of ambassadors sent by Yenki is Inanna resurrected and able to return to the world of the living. This myth underlines Eres Kigal's ruthless power and absolute dominion over the realm of the dead. Eres Kigal is often depicted as a majestic and austere figure, emphasizing her power and authority in the underworld. Her image is that of an imposing queen who rules with a mystery of justice and severity. She is sometimes shown with wings, symbolizing her control over both the heavenly and subterranean aspects of existence. The cult of Eres Kigal was not as prominent as that of other Mesopotamian gods, but her influence was profound. Funerary rites and invocations for the dead often included offerings to Eres Kigal to ensure the safe passage of souls to the underworld. In addition, her figure inspired respect and fear, reminding the living of the inevitability of death and the mystery surrounding it. Number 12, Yama, is a pivotal figure in the religions of Hinduism and Buddhism, recognized as the god of death and the judge of souls in the afterlife. His role and symbolism reflect the beliefs about morality, fat, and the cycle of life and death. Yama is one of the earliest gods mentioned in Vedic texts, particularly the Rig Veda, one of the oldest texts in Hinduism. He is described as the first mortal to die, and thus becomes the king of the dead. In later literature, such as the Mahabharata and the Puranas, his role is expanded, and he is portrayed as a judge who decides the fate of souls based on their actions during life. Yama is responsible for overseeing the underworld, known as Naraka in Hinduism. There, he decides the fate of each soul based on their karma, or the actions accumulated during their lifetimes. Virtual souls may be sent to one of the heavens, while sinful souls may be sent to different levels of punishment in Naraka. In Buddhism, Yama plays a similar role. He is known as Xitigarba or Enma in Japanese Buddhism, and acts as a judge of the dead, helping to guide souls through the processes of rivers and the cycle of samsara. Yama is typically depicted as an imposing and stern figure, riding a buffalo and wielding a lasso with which he captures the souls of the dead. In some depictions, he is shown wearing a crown and holding a cloak, symbolizing his authority and power. His skin color is often described as dark or green, reflecting his connection to death and the underworld. The cult of Yama includes rituals and ceremonies designed to placate the god and secure a favorable judgment for the deceased. During festivals such as Petru Paxa, Hindus perform offerings and rituals in honor of their ancestors, asking for Yama's blessing so that the souls of the deceased may find peace and liberation. In addition to his role as the god of death, Yama also symbolizes the importance of Dharma, or moral duty, in daily life. His judgment is based on principles of justice and morality, serving as a reminder that actions in life have consequences in the afterlife. Number 11, Mictlantecutli, is a central and feared figure in Aztec mythology, known as the god of death and the ruler of the underworld, Mictlan. Mictlantecutli, whose name means Lord of Mictlan, is the son of Tonatiu, the sun god, and Tlaltecutli, the earth goddess. His consort is Mictecasiwat, the lady of Mictlan, and together they rule the underworld, a final resting place for the souls of the dead. Mictlan is located deep within the earth and is divided into several levels, each with its own challenges. Mictlan is the destination of souls that have died a natural death. To reach this realm, souls must undergo an arduous four-year journey, overcoming various obstacles, including colliding mountains, a desert, and a lagoon of blood. Only at the end of this journey do souls find rest under the care of Mictlan Tecutli and Mictecasiwat. 
A is frequently depicted as a skeleton or cadaverous looking being, with a face devoid of flesh that emphasizes his dominion over death. A often wears a hairdress adorned with feathers and owl eyes, symbols of the night and the underworld. Offerings dedicated to him include food, ceramic objects, and in some cases human sacrifices, all intended to gain his favor and ensure a peaceful transition to the afterlife. As ruler of the underworld, A is responsible for receiving and caring for the souls of the dead. His role is essential in the cycle of life and death, ensuring that souls fulfill their destiny and find rest in Mictlan. Ceremonies and rituals in his honor seek to appease him and obtain his protection for the deceased. The cult of Mictlan Tecutli was prominent in Aztec society, and his influence persists in contemporary Mexican traditions such as the Day of the Dead. During this holiday, the dead are honored with altars, offerings, and celebrations, reflecting the continued veneration and respect for Mictlan Tecutli and the crucial role he plays in life and death. Number 10, El, is an enigmatic and powerful figure in Norse mythology, best known as the goddess of the underworld and ruler of the realm of the dead that bears her name, Ellen. Her history and role reflect Viking beliefs about death, the afterlife, and the fate of souls. El is the daughter of Loki, the trickster god, and the giantess Angboda. Her siblings are Fenrir, the gigantic wolf, and Hormungandr, the serpent who encircles Migar. The cause of her lineage, El was destined to rule over the underworld, a task she accepted with sternness and justice. Elaine, her domain, is the place where the souls of those who die of illness or old age go, in contrast to Balaya, where fallen warriors go in battle. Elaine is described as a bleak and cold place, located in Niflame, one of the Nine worlds of Norse cosmology. It is surrounded by the river Hall and protected by a watchdog named Garn. Souls arriving in Elaine must cross the bridge Hajargru, guarded by the Maiden Modgood, before finding their place in the realm of El. Unlike the glorious Balaya, Elaine is a place of stillness and shadow, where souls rest in eternity. El is often depicted as a half-living, half-dead figure, with one side of her body beautiful and the other side decaying, symbolizing her dominion over life and death. Her dual appearance reflects the inescapable nature of death and the transience of life. Sometimes, she is shown wearing a dark cloak and a stern gas, underlining her role as a hoodhead of souls. As goddess of the underworld, El is tasked with receiving and caring for the souls of the dead who have not perished in battle. Her justice is impartial, ensuring that each soul finds its proper place in Elaine. Although her realm is often feared, it is also a resting place for weary souls. El maintains the balance between the worlds of the living and the dead, reminding humans of the inevitability of their fate. Number 9, Anubis, is one of the most recognizable and revered gods in ancient Egyptian mythology. Known as the god of death, mummification, and the underworld, his role in funerary practices and beliefs about the afterlife is central to understanding Egyptian culture and religion. Anubis, Kajedimpu in ancient Egyptian, is the son of Neptis and Set, although some legends identify him as the son of Osiris and Isis. Despite his origin, Anubis is a respected deity primarily associated with the protection of the dead and their tombs. In the Egyptian pantheon, he has a vital role in the mummification process and the judgment of souls. Anubis is easily identifiable by his black jackal-like head, an animal associated with cemeteries due to its scavenging behavior. Anubis, black skin symbolizes the Ka and rivers, related to the fertile soil of the Nile. He is often depicted wearing a robe and carrying an ankh, a symbol of life, underlining his role as guardian of souls transitioning to the afterlife. Anubis, most prominent role is his involvement in the mummification ritual. The Egyptians believed that in order to ensure a soul's safe journey to the afterlife, the body had to be properly preserved. Anubis presided over the embalming process, ensuring that each step was performed according to sacred rituals. Additionally, Anubis was in charge of weighing the deceased's earth against the feather of Maat, goddess of truth and justice, at the judgment of souls. If the earth was lighter than the feather, the soul was worthy of entering the Aru, the Egyptian paradise. The cult of Anubis was widespread, with numerous temples and sites dedicated to his worship. Priests performing embalming often wore masks of Anubis to invoke his presence and blessing during the process. 
Egyptians also made offerings and recited prayers to Anubis to protect the tombs of their loved ones from looters and ensure a peaceful transition to the afterlife. Number 8, Hades, is one of the most prominent and complex figures in Greek mythology, known as the god of the underworld and the guardian of the dead. Hades is the son of Cronus and Rhea, and the brother of Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Demeter, and Estia. After the defeat of the Titans, the world was divided among the three main siblings, Zeus got the sky, Poseidon the Seas, and Hades the underworld. Unlike his brothers, Hades did not reside on Mount Olympus, but in his dark and mysterious realm beneath the earth. Hades underworld, also known as Hades, is a vast and gloomy place where the souls of the dead reside for eternity. This realm includes various regions, such as Tartarus, where evil souls are punished, and the Elysian Fields, a paradise for virtuous souls. The river Sytygx, the river Acheron, and other infernal rivers surround and cross the underworld, with Charon, the ferryman, charged with ferrying souls across these waters. Hades is often depicted as a stern and majestic god, sometimes with a beard and always with an imposing expression. He is often shown wearing his helmet of invisibility, a hit from the Cyclopes, which allows him to move unseen. His main emblem is the scepter, a symbol of his authority, and he is sometimes shown accompanied by Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guards the gates of the underworld. Hades plays a crucial role in numerous Greek myths, including the myth of Persephone, his wife and queen of the underworld. According to the myth, Hades abducted Persephone and took her to the underworld to become his wife, causing grief and anger to his mother, Demeter, the goddess of agriculture. This myth explains the cycle of the seasons. Persephone's team with Hades corresponds to winter, when the earth is barren, and her return to the surface marks a spring and the renewal of life. The cult of Hades was less visible than that of other Greek gods, as his dominion over death inspired fear and respect. Nevertheless, the Greeks paid homage to him to ensure a peaceful passage to the afterlife and to propitiate the dead. Sacrifices and offerings were made to him in funeral rituals, and his figure appeared in various artistic and literary representations. Number 7, Thanatos, is an intriguing and shadowy figure in Greek mythology, known as the personification of non-violent death. His role and symbolism offered deep insight into Greek beliefs about death and the afterlife, differentiating him from other deities related to mortality. He is the son of Nyx, the goddess of the night, and Erebus, the deity of darkness. He is the twin brother of Hypnos, the god of sleep, which underlines the closer relationship between sleep and death in Greek mythology. While Hypnos represents temporal rest, Thanatos embodies eternal rest. He is often depicted as a winged juice, sometimes holding an inverted torch symbolizing the extinction of life. His serene and sometimes melancholic appearance reflects the peaceful nature of the death he brings. Unlike more fearsome figures of death, such as Hades, Thanatos is seen as a gentle liberate, leading souls to their final rest without suffering. Thanatos plays an essential role in numerous Greek myths and literary works. He appears in the famous tragedy Alcestis by Euripides, where Hercules fights with Thanatos to retrieve Alcestis, soul and bring it back to life. This myth highlights the importance of Thanatos and his influence on the life and death of mortals. In other stories, Thanatos is portrayed as inevitable and relentless, ensuring that no one can escape their final fate. His presence in Greek mythology serves as a reminder of the fragility of life and the inevitability of death. Although Thanatos did not have an extensive cult or dedicated temples, his figure was widely recognized and respected in Greek culture. Greeks offered sacrifices and performed funerary rituals to honor the dead and ensure peaceful passage into the afterlife, invoking Thanatos, presence to guide souls. Number 6, Morrigan, is one of the most enigmatic and powerful deities in Celtic mythology, known as the goddess of war, death, and transformation. Her figure is associated with battle, fat, and the power of life and death. Morrigan is part of the pantheon of Celtic gods, specifically the Tuatha de Danan, a divine race in Irish mythology. Her name means Great Queen or Ghost Queen, and in some accounts, she is described as a triad of sisters, consisting of Morrigan, Bab, and Macha. Each of these figures represents different aspects of war and sovereignty. 
Morrigan is frequently depicted as a strong and formidable female figure, often transforming into a raven or crow, birds associated with death and conflict. These birds are seen on battlefields, symbolizing the fate of fallen warriors. Morrigan's ability to subversive reinforces her connection to transformation and death. Morrigan plays a crucial role in several Celtic myths, including the Ulster Cycle and the mythological Cycle. In the time Boku Enge, the cattle theft of Kuli, Morrigan confronts the hero Kuchulain, first as a cow, then as an ale, and finally as a wolf, testing her strengths and resolve. In addition to her association with war, Morrigan is also a goddess of prophecy and fat. She is said to be able to predict the deaths of warriors, and her appearances on battlefields are considered an omen of impending death. Morrigan not only symbolizes destruction, but also renewal and sovereignty, being a guardian of the eternal cycle of life and death. The cult of Morrigan was centered on the veneration of war and sovereignty. The Celts paid homage to her before and after battles, seeking her favor to ensure victory and honor the fallen. Number 5, Kali, is one of the most complex and powerful figures in Hindu mythology, known as the goddess of destruction, time, and regeneration. Her often terrifying and fascinating image symbolizes the duality of life and death, as well as the power of transformation. Kali is a manifestation of the goddess Parvati, the consort of Shiva, one of the principal gods of Hinduism. According to legends, Kali was born from the fury of Durga, another form of Parvati, during a battle against demons who threatened the balance of the universe. In her anger, Durga took the form of Kali, a fierce, warrior goddess, to defeat the demons and restore cosmic order. She is often depicted as a fearsome figure, with dark skin, multiple arms, and a long red tank. She wears a garland of skulls and a belt of severed arms, symbolizing the destruction of the ego and the cycle of life and death. Her image, though terrifying, is also a representation of liberation and the dissolution of the illusions of the material world. Kali carries a sword in one hand, a symbol of her power to destroy ignorance and evil, and in the other hand, the head of a demon, representing the defeat of dark forces. Her frenetic dance on battlefields is a metaphor for the cosmic energy that moves the universe and maintains the balance between creation and destruction. Kali plays a crucial role in several Hindu myths and legends. In the Devi Mahatmya, a sacred text dedicated to the goddess, Kali is described as fighting the demons Chanda and Munda, and later, the demon Raktavija. In their battle, Kali displays both her ferocity and her compassion, destroying evil to protect the cosmic order. Despite her terrifying appearance, Kali is also a benevolent goddess who cares for and protects her devotees. Her role as a destroyer is seen not as a negative force, but as one necessary for regeneration and rivers. Kali helps humans overcome their fears, confront their own inner demons, and find spiritual liberation. The cult of Kali is especially prominent in Bengal and across Northeast India. The festival of Kali Puja, which coincides with Diwali in other parts of India, is an important celebration in her honor. During this festival, rituals, offerings, and chants are performed dedicated to Kali, seeking her protection and blessings. Number 4, Inyanui Tepe, is a pivotal figure in Mori mythology, known as the goddess of death and ruler of the underworld. Whose name means great woman of the night, she is the daughter of Nemauta, the god of the forests and creator of mankind. According to tradition, Inyanui Tepe was created by Itne from theirs. Originally known as Inya Wan, she became Inyanui Tepe after discovering that Tne was also her father. This revelation led her to retreat to the underworld, where she became the guardian of the dead. Inyanui Tepe resides in the underworld, a place known in Mori mythology as Raroenga. Here, she receives and cares for the souls of the deceased, ensuring that they find their way into the afterlife. This realm is a place of rest and regeneration, where souls are protected by the compassion of Inyanuitepe. She is often depicted as an imposing and majestic figure, with a mystery of beauty and terror. Her body is said to be a deep red color, with eyes that seem a light hair and long hair that stretches to the ground. In some traditions, she is described as having a mouse adorned with obsidian teeth, symbolizing her power over life and death. One of the best known myths about Inyanuitepe is that of the demigod Mui. 
in his attempt to conquer death and grant immortality to humanity, Mui attempted to enter Inyanuite Pe's body while she slept. However, Bert's awaken the goddess, who killed Mui, thus reaffirming the inevitability of death. This myth underscores the importance of Inyanuite Pe and her role as guardian of the cycle of life and death. Number 3, Apuch, is a fearsome and mysterious figure in Mayan mythology, known as the god of death and lord of the underworld, Sibalba. Apuch, also Kayet Kisin or Yum Kimil, is one of the most important gods in the Mayan pantheon. His name can be translated as the Vipe or the Skinner, reflecting his association with death and Dika. Apuch rules over Sibalba, the Mayan underworld, a place filled with challenges and trials for the souls of the deceased. Sibalba is an underground realm, described as a dark and terrifying place, inhabited by demonic beings and ruled by Apuch and other lords of death. According to Mayan mythology, the souls of the dead must go through numerous obstacles and overcome trials to reach their final destination in this underworld. Descriptions of Sibalba vary, but it is generally regarded as a place filled with danger and suffering, in contrast to concepts of paradise in other cultures. It is often depicted as a skeletal or cadaverous figure, with an appearance that inspires fear. It is shown with a number of macabre tributes, such as necklaces of human eyes and ears, and is sometimes associated with dogs, which in some Mesoamerican cultures are a guides of the dead. These depictions on their lineage dominion over death and its role as an enforcer of justice in the underworld. Apuch's primary role is to receive and judge the souls of the dead in Sibalba. He is responsible for ensuring that the souls undergo the appropriate trials and tribulations before finding rest. Furthermore, Apuch is seen as a force that maintains the balance between life and death, reminding the Maya of the inevitability of mortality and the importance of living a righteous life. The cult of Apuch was prominent in Mayan society, and his images and symbols appear on many pottery, codices, and monuments. The Maya performed ceremonies and rituals to appease the gods of the underworld, and offerings to Apuch included food, drink, and in some cases human sacrifice. These rituals were intended to secure the protection and favor of the god of death for the deceased and the living. Number 2, Izanami, is one of the most important and tragic figures in Japanese mythology. Known as the goddess of creation and death. Izanami, whose name means she who invites, along with her husband and brother Izanagi, whose name means she who invites, are the primordial deities in charge of creating the world. According to the myth, Izanami and Izanagi were tasked by the gods with shaping the airs out of primordial chaos. Izanami and Izanagi descended to earth on a heavenly bridge and, using a jeweled spear, stirred up the waters of chaos. From the traps that fell from the spear, the fierce islands of Japan emerged. The divine couple later descended to these islands and continued to create more land, flora, and fauna, thus establishing the foundation of the world. Izanami's tragedy began when she gave birth to the god of fear, Kagutsuchi. During childbirth, Izanami suffered severe burns that eventually led to her death. Devastated by idolos, Izanagi attempted to rescue Izanami from the Yomi, the underworld. However, upon finding Izanami, he discovered that her body had decomposed and taken on a terrible appearance. Ashamed and in right that being seen in such a state, Izanami pursued Izanagi, who eventually escaped and sealed the entrance to the Yomi with a rock. Izanami is a figure that symbolizes both life and death. In the early part of her myth, she represents creation, fertility, and life. However, following her death and descent into the Yomi, she symbolizes death and Dika. This duality reflects the complexity of existence and the eternal cycle of life, death, and rivers. Number 1. Sinigami. They are intriguing and mystical figures in Japanese culture, known as the gods or spirits of death. The concept of Sinigami is relatively modern compared to other deities and spirits in Japanese mythology. Sinigami do not appear in ancient Shinto or Buddhist texts, but rather develop from outside the influences and the evolution of popular beliefs about death and the afterlife. Sinigami are frequently depicted as shadowy and mysterious figures, similar to Western Green Reapers. They are believed to be responsible for guiding the souls of the deceased to the afterlife, ensuring that they fulfill their destiny. 
In popular culture, Sinigami often appear as anthropomorphic beings with dark and terrifying aspects, carrying tools such as sit to rip the lives of mortals. Sinigami have no official role in Shinto or Buddhism, but their influence has seeped into popular beliefs and traditions. They are seen as intermediaries between the world of the living and the dead, guiding souls and ensuring that the cycle of life and death is kept in balance. In Japanese popular culture, Sinigami have gained prominence through various forms of entertainment, including manga, anime, literature, and film. Works such as Death Note, a popular manga and anime, portray Sinigami as powerful entities that control life and death through magical books. In Bleach, another popular manga and anime, Sinigami are depicted as spiritual warriors who battle evil spirits. These are just a few examples, but the list goes on and on. Cultures have a fascinating way of personifying their endeavors and unique was. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Until next time.